six months into the year and I'm finally getting around to filming this video. <laughs> Welcome back. As you can tell from the title, I want to talk about things that I would do differently if I started an OnlyFans account in 2023 rather than when I started one back in 2020. It's been three years now, a lot has changed. I've learned a lot from both experience, trial and error, and just being on the platform for over three years. So I figured this would be a good time to look back, reflect, and see if there's anything I would do differently that I would also recommend you do if you start an OnlyFans in 2023. Because not only has a lot shifted for me as the creator, but again, the platform itself has changed a lot. I think there's so much more that you can do on OnlyFans these days, so let's talk about it. If you're new, my name is Michaela, and back in January 2020, I created an OnlyFans account having no idea how much it would truly change my life, but by doing so, it really helped my YouTube channel take off. It got me out of student debt, debt in general, and helped me eventually buy this house. And I know that I have not only OnlyFans, but also YouTube and you to thank for all of that. I've documented pretty much the entire journey from that very first night of creating an account to everything in between up until today. So I'm going to link that playlist down below if you recently found this video or my channel. I have three years of OnlyFans videos, advice, content, how to file OnlyFans taxes, biggest mistakes, biggest tips, how to earn, everything about anything that has to do with OnlyFans. I have a video on it. I have a lot of OnlyFans Q and A's as well. So everything is in the playlist down below. I also do have my OnlyFans link in the description, but you cannot link it directly on YouTube. It's just my full name, Michaela Smuntry. For a shout out to things that I would do differently if I started my account today and not back then. If you haven't yet, but are thinking about creating an OnlyFans account, please click the referral link in my description box down below. You don't lose any money by doing this. The referral comes out of the OnlyFans portion, so the website, but never you as the creator. So yeah, if you wanna sign up and create your own account, I do have my referral in the description. It would help a ton. Last thing to mention is that I do still offer OnlyFans promos and shout outs on my OnlyFans feed. I never delete it. Permanent post promoting your page. DM me on Instagram or Twitter to set one of those up. We can definitely get a spot in. I have a few spots per day and per week. They fill up kind of quick, but I can definitely find a spot if you would like one. And then I do still offer OnlyFans consultations through Zoom. 30 minutes, one-on-one -on -one consultation, questions, anything you want to talk or just would like more one-on-one -on -one help with your page. I set those up as well. So shoot me a message on Instagram or Twitter and we can get that going. I think that is all I need to mention at the beginning of this video. I'm sorry for the big to-do list, but I just wanna make sure that I mentioned everything in case you are a newer viewer. I made a list on my phone. I've kind of been brainstorming things since the start of this new year, because this is a video that I have been wanting to make since the beginning of this year, 2023, but I do have a list on my phone of things I would do differently starting in OnlyFans in 2023, three years later. So I'm just gonna go down the list and talk about kind of what I would or wouldn't recommend as a newer creator or what I would personally just do different had I started now and not back then because the internet is a very different place than pre-pandemic and it's crazy that I even started before COVID was a thing, but looking back, it definitely saved my butt. It would have put me in a very different place come March 2020, so I'm grateful for that. And it makes me happy that my videos have helped so many of you get through the hard chunk of the pandemic as well. Anyway, I'm just gonna go down the list and let's get started. So the first thing on my list would be, I would have started yesterday, not today. You will always regret not starting sooner. If you've been thinking about this and you keep kind of pushing it off or it's just an idea, or even if you have the regret of, oh, I wish I started in OnlyFans a year ago, two years ago, last month, you will always wish that you started sooner. Even with me starting in January of 2020, part of me still wishes I had done it sooner because of how much it helped me when I was really struggling at the time to pay bills and just get out of debt in my young 20s, especially once you start making income. That being said though, never feel like it's too late because I feel like we tend to have those negative thoughts in our heads of, oh, I should have started sooner or it's too late for me to be successful. It's never too late. And as soon as you start, you will wish that you started sooner, but it's never too late so definitely sign up today because tomorrow you're going to be really happy that your past self set you up for success that being said 
If you've been thinking about this for a while, definitely sign up using my referral link down below. It's also in the comments. You don't even have to really use it if you don't want to, but just creating the account itself is a big step. The next thing on my list of what I would do differently if I started in OnlyFans in 2023 is I would have used a fake identity. So back in 2020, I had just listened to a podcast before I started my OnlyFans from an influencer that regretted not using her full name on different social media platforms because she she stemmed from the OG era of YouTube where people tended to use like different phrases, you know, like strawberry electric and makeup by Mandy and how brilliance, like stuff like that, where they would come up with a little nickname and then later on as they became successful, they changed it to their full name that they chose, whether it's their first and middle or first and last. So because in 2020, her advice was to, when you sign up for an account, use your full name. Do you have that handle on Instagram or TikTok before somebody else can grab it? Back when I started OnlyFans, I will admit, I was pretty naive to exactly what the platform was. I knew it was for a more scandalous 18 plus photos. I knew that they had less restrictive content guidelines and I knew that I like to take some spicy content so it would be a good place to be able to post something that probably would be slightly weird to put on Instagram. So I wasn't really aware of how it evolved from that back in like 2019 to what it became today. And so because it was a new social media platform and I had just listened to this advice, I made my account my full name. And I guess I'm kind of glad I did because it's cohesive with my YouTube and Instagram and it's what I'm known for. So because this is something that is attached to my public online identity, it makes sense that it would be the same. However, it would be a lot easier if it wasn't. And I guess I could have changed it, but at this point it's, it is what it is. But if I were to start over today, I definitely would use a stage name, alias, fake name, nickname, whatever it is, I probably would do something easier to spell, short and sweet, you know, like it's something easy to remember if somebody sees something online and wants to look it up later because my name is hard to remember, my name is hard to spell, therefore it's harder to find the OnlyFans. So that would be another piece of advice is something easy to spell and easy to find and remember. Going off of that, the next thing on my list of what I would do differently is I would set up completely different accounts. So like I just mentioned, it's all cohesive with my other social media platforms, but if I were to start completely over, I think I would do it the way that I've been recommending other people through these videos to do it. And that is, you know, create that nickname, stage name, and then create pages or profiles on Instagram and Twitter and Reddit, TikTok, separate accounts so that if anything happens, you don't lose your main Instagram account. You don't lose your TikTok because you can be banned. Some platforms are not the friendliest with OnlyFans content. I mentioned OnlyFans briefly in a TikTok once. I didn't show anything. I just said how much I earned and they deleted my account. So things like that can happen and it's safer to have a separate account made that is less risky of losing. And I think it does just protect your real identity if this is something that you want to do on the side and keep separate from your personal social media. I really recommend that. And if you were, if you're someone that likes to stay organized too, I feel like that's helpful because then, you know, you have like your business or OnlyFans account and pages and then you have your personal usage. The next thing on my list is I would have networked more and posted more often, would have done more shout outs for shout outs. So networking, it's a big thing. It's a really great way to grow. Finding creators that are around the same size as you, doing shout out for shout out, exchanging is an awesome way to build exposure. It's usually pretty risk free. If they have around the same following as you, why not? I've done this a lot recently and it really does help bring in like a boost and in the beginning I had YouTube to kind of bring in most of my audience not saying I had a big YouTube channel at the time It was actually really small But my OnlyFans video the first one really took off and a lot of people found my OnlyFans from that video So I felt pretty secure in that way that I didn't need to keep promoting But I wouldn't have gotten too comfortable. I definitely should have pushed myself more and now I mean OnlyFans is such an oversaturated platform as it is that the networking opportunities or other creators that I could have become friends with, like they're there and I do have some, but I feel like I probably want wanted to push myself to, you know, um, put myself out there more and try to make more friends and network and know more about the community, I guess, because networking will really help on a platform like this. I guess I just got a little comfortable. 
Oh, the next thing on my list of things that I would do differently is tags. I think this is new where you can actually start putting tags into your OnlyFans posts, hashtags, taking other accounts. The website isn't really set up for people to explore and discover new pages. Like if somebody doesn't have your link or if you're not a public friend with somebody on your OnlyFans page, it can be hard to find your page. The ability to tag other creators now has been super helpful. The ability to add in all of these extra like algorithmic options of tagging really helps especially like even on instagram tiktok twitter reddit utilize hashtags i know that a lot of people say hashtags are dead and that they don't really help your post what are you trying to achieve though because with only fans they do help and you know hashtag of hashtag only fans i mean i guess twitter is kind of like since um, Elon Musk, uh, it still helps a lot. The next thing on my list, I guess I did touch upon briefly, and that is that I wouldn't get too comfortable because nothing lasts forever. I'm three years in now, and I'm not sure if the video came out yet. I just filmed a video on comparing my OnlyFans earnings from the first year, the second year, and the third year, kind of seeing like if it's still a stable source of income and if it's worth it. I'm three years in now, and my monthly income on the platform is very different than what it was when I first started you will definitely go through waves on OnlyFans earning money because so much of it can be inconsistent. Some months you might get a boost of a lot of new subscribers or people buying your posts or bundles of photos, but some months are definitely lower than others. I think I hit a point in 2021 where I was at a very stable place on OnlyFans, but like I just said, it comes and goes in waves and every month is different. So for a while, I was doing just fine. I wasn't worried about it. Looking back, I do wish that I pushed myself more, networked more, I did more shout out for shout outs, promoted it more because like I said too, nothing lasts forever and I'm at kind of a dip right now. But again, it's, it's a wave and I've had some peaks this year too. I also took a long break. Yeah, I guess if I were starting today, I would just wanna tell myself, you know, nothing lasts forever and always continue to try to earn more money, especially on a platform like OnlyFans. I mean, if people don't agree with it, they have a lot to say, especially about how the income won't last or that people will age out or blah, blah, blah. And like, maybe they could be right in some cases, but also isn't it so satisfying to prove somebody wrong? I mean, I'm three years in and I'm still making it work. I know that might not seem like a long time, but it's definitely longer than I expected to be on this platform and it's longer than probably anybody else predicted OnlyFans would be stable, so who knows? But for right now, I'm just going to try to earn as much as I can and keep building from there. Going off of that too, this isn't really something that I didn't do because I definitely was super cautious with it, but it is something I would recommend and that is taking your earnings from OnlyFans, especially if you are getting to a point of comfortability where you are making a lot more money than you're used to, pay off all the debt you can, put the money aside into a high interest savings account where your interest rate is higher than like a checkings or even just a normal savings account. Let your money make money. Put some into the stock market if you're familiar with investing. Turn on the option to reinvest your dividends. Finding ways to make your money make money I think is one of the smartest things to do with money, extra income kind of coming in from a platform such as OnlyFans. Purchasing property, investing in real estate. I see a lot of people thinking that the money lasts forever because they're at a peak on OnlyFans, but then splurging on trips and private jets and clothing and designer items. And then guess what? It dips because they got comfortable and they didn't set aside the money. They didn't save it correctly. And there are certain things that I taught myself when OnlyFans was really taking off for me because I wanted my income to last and I wanted to find ways to double and triple the money. Whether you make $10 or $10,000 in a month, you can find a way to turn the $10 into 20 and the 10,000 into 20,000. And this last one on my list might surprise you, but something that I would do differently starting in OnlyFans in 2023 rather than in 2020 is I would have stuck to my boundaries more. And what I mean by this is, you know, when I first started on OnlyFans, my boundaries looked a lot different than what they look like now. And I always mention how you should, you know, be comfortable with what you're posting, never post anything you're uncomfortable with. You know, you can have these boundaries even though the platform may intimidate you and everyone has their own boundaries, but as long as you know what yours are and what you're comfortable with, then like no harm there, you know? 
And what's really interesting is the longer I've been on the platform, the wider my boundaries have expanded. But at the end of the day, I also don't have any regrets. I think you just kind of get to a point where you're like numb to all the content out there that nothing like phases you anymore. Definitely remind yourself what your boundaries are and be aware that, you know, you should always feel comfortable with what you are doing online. And that goes beyond OnlyFans. But that is my list of things that I would do differently starting an OnlyFans today rather than in 2020. Definitely let me know what's on your list if you're also an OnlyFans creator and there's things that you would do differently. I would love to hear them. Comment down below. I'm surprised I forgot to say this earlier, but you are always more than welcomed to promote your OnlyFans in the comment section of any OnlyFans video of mine. So feel free to give yourself a nice plug down below. But yeah, let me know if you thought of any more that you would add to your list. Again, if you want to set up a promo consultation or even just sign up for OnlyFans, everything is linked down below. But thank Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more OnlyFans content. I also do chat about OnlyFans on my Instagram too, so follow me there. It's usually on my stories, and that's where you'll find more info on like promos and all of that. Please subscribe for more OnlyFans videos, and I'll see you real soon with my next video. Bye!